the Panasonic FZ80 Super Zoom. This is not gonna be a talking head video with me rambling on with endless specs. No, fast forward to me in DC. We're gonna look at photo examples, video examples. This isn't a full review. You'll get an idea of how this camera performs, its super zoom capabilities, its wide angle capabilities. Let's get going. So the FZ80 does a lot of things right. It's a nice portable super zoom camera which is really well suited for traveling. It fits nicely in a small bag, but it's not too small where the buttons are really tiny and you sort of have to fidget with it. And it's really inexpensive right now. Now notice how I didn't say it's cheap, but is it cheap? Well, there are a few drawbacks. Let's just get my biggest one out of the way right now. And that's this, the LCD screen in the back. Nothing wrong with the screen itself, it's just that it does not tilt. And in this day and age when just about every camera has a tilting screen, that becomes a little bit of annoying, especially when you're trying to get creative or low angles like this. Gotta go really down low. Now, speaking of down low, let's take a look at our furry friend here in video mode so you can see the sharpness and detail at the telephoto setting. And you really can decipher individual strands of fur. You can see the eyeball nice and sharp. And that 1200 millimeter zoom allows you to stand far enough back not to scare wildlife. Some more DC wildlife. And here's a nice spin on birding. Pretty cool, right? Even our furry friend stood up and took notice of that one. Now let's take a look at the image quality at various focal lengths. All the way in the distance is the Capitol building at full wide. And as you can see, as we zoom up gradually at the different focal lengths, you can see how the image stays relatively sharp and clear. Zero limits on that Sprite sign. I never realized how the parking meters in DC were so short. These guys got great parking spots, didn't they? Now it's one thing to shoot a stationary car, another thing, a moving plane at 500 miles an hour at full zoom. Sorry for the shakiness, it's really tough but you can see the range of zoom is pretty spectacular. And if we freeze a frame at the full zoom and crop in a little bit, you can even see the writing right on the engine. What do you think about that, huh? Go fly a kite.
Now the White House has a black fence around the perimeter, so I position myself inside the grating to get this shot of the White House and again to demonstrate the power of that zoom all the way up on the White House fountain. Wow, it's like I almost found the fountain of youth. You found no fountain of youth here. And this is the U.S. Treasury building. They've been really busy printing a lot of money. Maybe it's this guy's fault. Let's see what he looks like. Up close and personal. Can the FC-80 be used as a spy cam? I tried zooming in on these White House windows to see if I could see anything going on. Now I actually did see something inside. Pay attention and look closely and you can see for yourself. You want to see something more interesting than that? Take a look at this that I found in DC. Now there's one issue you should know about. When you hit the movie record button, if you're in program mode or auto mode, it's gonna come out weird sometimes and overexposed like this. I even tried lowering the exposure and it still didn't look right. You have to go into movie manual mode and then it sets the exposure properly for recording video. I don't know if it's some sort of bug or firmware update it needs, but it's definitely something noticeable. So I recommend when you shoot video, make sure you're in that movie manual M mode with the camera on it. I really do like the images that come out of this camera. The pictures look great. The video, nice 4K 30 quality, variable speed zoom. There are some quirks. I did mention the LCD screen doesn't tilt, which I don't like, but also the viewfinder has an issue. When you look through it, the focus of the diopter keeps changing. The little wheel that's right next to the viewfinder is very easy to move. Now, I noticed some people on YouTube had some suggestions like using black tape. I'm not a fan about make, putting tape on my camera, sort of makes it ugly. But just realize, I thought that was a defect with this camera, but apparently it's a design flaw where it's really easy to have that focus diopter change. And then you really can't be sure whether your image is in focus or not, or it's just that your focusing of your viewfinder is correct. To go from using the viewfinder to the LCD screen, you have to press the LVF button on the camera. Whereas with most other cameras, it senses your eye position and automatically switches. Item 151 on today's glitch list. The camera does have image stabilization and it does an okay job when you're at the wider end, but when you're really in tight, especially at an extreme telephoto, it becomes difficult. Now remember in video, since the 4K is cropped, the zoom isn't 1200 millimeters, it's actually 1680 millimeters. That's one third more than what it is in photos. That's 480 millimeters more. So it is a really strong zoom. So if you really wanna get in closer than you can for the 1200 millimeters, just take a 4K video and you'll be cropped in without loss in quality. I'm gonna go into more details of this camera in another review. It may already be up yet, but if not, it will be coming soon. Please subscribe for that. But if you can live with the little quirks that I mentioned, I really think this camera is a good choice for wildlife, for birding, for general travel. I mean, the zoom range is so versatile. I would say one of its biggest competitors is the Canon SX70, which I reviewed. I think the image is actually better with the Panasonic. I also think the Canon maybe is constructed a little better, a little less quirky and a little fewer design flaws. But take a look at that video if you wanna compare the Panasonic versus the Canon. Personally, 
I think this is the better camera. If this video is helpful to you in helping you decide whether or not this camera is for you, please give it a like and subscribe. A lot of videos on Super Zoom Bridge cameras, old tech and new tech all coming together on Tech to Remember. Thanks very much. See you in the next video.